I guess we can talk about spiders. I had a hunch that this movie gave me arachnophobia, you know? Really? And yeah, because I had, I don't like insects at all. Like, none of them. Okay. Even stink bugs or daddy long legs that are just fucking a nuisance. Reasonable. It's reasonable. Harmless. Yeah. You know? Uh, they annoy the hell out of me or like if i see them and it, it, like say if like one's near me and i don't notice it until it's like moving around close to me i still freak out i still mm -hmm. get a jump scare about that shit and i'm like maybe this is the movie that like caused that to happen this like unjustifiable fear of mm -hmm. critters creatures bugs insects whatever yeah and i think i think that's the case i think by the end of me watching this the first time i became jeff daniels in real life oh because he is suffering from arachnophobia in the movie yeah you know yeah. i mean it's it's possible and there's definitely things we can get into as as this goes on we we can unpack that a little bit um I, I kind of had the opposite experience, like not, it, I mean, spiders are just kind of like naturally like icky. Um, yeah, well, they got fangs, they bite you. They got fangs, you know, we've, we've all seen do, them. Do dirty things, you know, they're just like, I, I don't know, I feel like they're the most violent creature. That's my perception, is like a, a, a spider's the most violent thing. It's almost like a miniature xenomorph, just running around, <laughs> trying to bite me you know <laughs> have having 10 batrillion babies and yeah it's all the same yeah you know just once but you know here here's the thing though like i'm comparing the two but like you know xenomorphs don't exist spiders do though spiders oh, are in everyone's life yeah i mean know? there there is definitely some shit in nature like you don't have to believe in the supernatural just look up some nature photos and that'll yeah, that's, that. that's more than enough to scare anyone the pants yeah, off do, anyone do like deep sea creatures washed up after hurricane and then you'd be like what the hell is that <laughs> what yeah. is that <laughs> well yeah and there's a photo making the rounds on the internet right now where someone did like a macro shot of what an ant's face looks like and oh god no oh my god nightmare fuel <laughs> yeah yeah there's like parasites that look like rhinos you know it's like what i mean like itty little bitty things and it's like they're microscopic but it's got a horn even and a, a, a mouth it looks like pacific rim but you know yeah. tiny little bastard you well, know even some of the stuff people use as bait for fishing like helgramites helgramites like, that thing will take yeah. a chunk out of you like yeah this one time stabbing Fred anything Trost. that can bite me back like we talked about Fred Trost before. Uh, yeah, he's he's kind and, of a, uh, for people who don't know, Fred Trost is a he was a host on a popular Michigan public broadcasting outdoorsman show. Yeah, go ahead. So like fishing, hunting, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the when I found out what a helgrabite was was because of Fred Trost, and he was like, he's like, yeah, these like creatures. I don't know what he was I, I, fishing for, like some sort of fish that loves helgramites. I would never buy a helgramite because they're so nasty. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about how big the mandibles are, and these things are nasty. Like they, it's like you know they, they, uh, a bobbit worm, but you know it, look at that up if you want some nightmare fuel. A bobbit worms. I think I've mentioned that on this podcast before as well. But a helgramite has the same type of closing mandible thing that a hell or that a, a bobbit worm does yeah and they're like yeah like and fred trost is saying like how yeah it could take like a chunk of your thumb off right oh, oh, it's yeah. like all all the stuff that a helgramite can do and then he goes and he grabs one but he doesn't get it right behind the neck and the goddamn helgramite like wraps around and like cuts open his thumb yeah <laughs> he's like ow little, yeah little he's sucker. Like, yeah he's explaining exactly what can happen if you're not careful and then it happens to him because he's not careful <laughs> yeah now that that was a real like tim the tool man taylor moment but uh <laughs> all right well let's let's hit some news and then then we can get back to talking about creepy things well I'm going to be ridiculous and just do a, a little bit of shameless self-promoting here. 
So there, there's a little movie that I made called Fear of the Dark. The poster's only been over my shoulder for the last 20 weeks. <laughs> And we're just starting to make the rounds at film festivals, and lo and behold, I, I win this award. We, we were nominated for the best film category and editing, and that I wear like a badge of honor. This is 24 karat gold, and it's made by the same company that makes the Oscar and the Emmy. And I just... I. I don't know. It even smells expensive. <laughs> so I, I was really happy to come home and find that today. Um, well, congratulations. You deserve it. You've put in a lot of hard work. Thank you. I want to say that before the next thing, because I don't want to sound like an asshole. For those of you listening, Brian has put on black gloves uh, to hold his trophy. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fingerprint it up. <laughs> I no, but you deserve it, man. I just I didn't want to say that joke first because it's like you're being sincere, and it's a it's a very good achievement. You deserve it. But if I if I were to say that without saying something first, it's like, wow, Matt, you're really an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I I would wear white gloves, but I have to turn a profit. Um, they they would be fingerless to defeat the entire point, but I couldn't find those. Yeah, fingerless so. gloves, fingerless white gloves because you don't want to get fingerprints on the fucking trophy. As as one does, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Congrats. Well, you know, I I've been privileged to be working currently with some really talented people, both in front and behind the camera. And you know, it's it is a team effort. And it, we we actually just wrapped a new one last weekend, so coming soon. Um. But I, you know, I, I was telling everyone, like, you know, if, if it looks good, it's because you all help make it look good because it, it really is a team sport. So if, if any of those people are listening, thank you all once again. Yeah, that's it. That's I, all I got. Uh, well, I'll just agree with everything you just said. I didn't have anything to do with the movie, but they and you uh, well, deserve yeah, a lot of credit. Drew the logo. So, yes. Made t-shirts yes. for everyone, which was super nice. Yeah. People were really excited to get those, by the way. So that that was cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Is, it, is that what you got? That's it. I'm over. That's it? Well, yep. congrats again, man. And to everyone that's helped Brian along the way, you guys are all rock stars. So Pretty much. My news isn't as special as that. It's actually kind of silly. But, okay. Um, Millie Bobby Brown of Stranger Things has come out to say that she no longer believes the world is flat. Awkward. <laughs> what did she say? What convinced her? Finally, besides the no. fire hose of evidence to the contrary. <laughs> nope. Okay. Not, not anything like that. Not the curvature of the earth in a spherical type of way. Mm -hmm. Not time zones. Just not orbit. Shadows. Yeah. Punch punching a beach ball around. She just had to let us know. Well oh. better late cool. than never. Better late that's than never. That's an that's an article that exists. That is a headline out there. Jesus Christ, what are we doing? I, whatever. Let's talk about a movie. Yeah, spiders, I guess. Uh. So do you want to revisit why this movie traumatized you? Or should we talk about the plot well, I mean, a little bit? Or how, how, how do you do want we, to handle this? Uh, whatever. Well, let's just go. Like, I mean, we can talk about how it traumatized me. I think this is the culprit for my irrational fear of anything that is a uh, 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 insect or a creature. Um, oh, if 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 that thing can kill you, that is not an irrational fear, and they can kill you. Although, yes, this particular spider, I found out because I, I actually was was uh, good and did my job for once, and kind of like looked up some trivia about this movie. Um, this particular spider is a harmless one. It it's just big, 
but it's harmless. So, like, people that really know their freaky-ass spiders are like, that's not a real spider. But to the rest of us, you're like, oh, no. Oh, God. No. <laughs> How is it not a real spider? Oh, I didn't say it's not a real spider. I, I said it's it's harmless because this particular breed um, isn't poisonous and they don't go after people in any way. It, uh, I, I should have wrote that down now that I've blown my credibility, but it's, it was native to South Africa. I remember that. And is it the oh, huntsman spider? Um, doesn't ring any bells. Okay. But, oh, buddy, did you know that there's spiders big enough to eat birds in South America? Yes. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Yeah, like I I wish I wish I could unknow that because I feel like I'll never be able to sleep again. There's just, there's like a lot of things that I know just because of my curiosity, not as like a exposure therapy, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. But it's like okay, I've seen some like crazy videos from like Australia. They're like found this in my house, and it's like this fucking spider. That's like the size of a dinner plate. And I'm just like, well, I would shit or throw up or both and then like move. Like I wouldn't step foot in that place again. Yeah. You know? Well, there, and, there's a reason British, the, the British colonies used it as a prison colony because literally everything in Australia can kill you. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah even like the sun right now is trying to kill Australia because <laughs> it's just always on fire. So, yeah. um, <laughs> right. Sorry. If there's any listener in Australia, I mean, like, it's kind of crazy yeah. when it's like Australia makes my local news. Like, I'm not talking about like our national news, but it's like, right, those fires in Australia are crazy, right? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. How how about those Team sharks? <laughs> we're, we're just gonna yeah. call that having the better beaches tax. Um, yeah. I I agree. I mean, the the people seem nice and the country looks beautiful, but if I have to check my shoes routinely for scorpions, um, yeah, I'm out. I, I don't. I I, I can't <laughs> deal, man. I <laughs> no. Good for you, yeah. though. Like you're made of sterner stuff than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Enough pressure makes anything a diamond, I guess. Right. <laughs> like it's, I we got. I agree. And then and then on top of that, like even like the, the animals that we think are cute, it's like the kangaroos and shit. It's like they have like roided out kangaroos that just mm. look like bodybuilders. And it's just like, what the hell's going on down there? You know? Why why do you have a kangaroo that has like the musculature of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Hey, you know? Hey man, like if they didn't want you to fight the thing, why do they give it boxing gloves? I'm just saying. <laughs> Right. <laughs> there's a kangaroo in tekken yeah that has boxing gloves and a bear oh there is yeah yeah it's like it's like uh sweeping kick is like its tail he just does a 360 just takes up the whole screen <laughs> yeah uh no going back to arachnophobia yeah, like, like uh, even now, like, so it's probably been since the 90s that I've watched this movie, mm -hmm. you know, uh, everyone that I talked to is like, oh, arachnophobia is so good, blah, blah, blah. And I just, I didn't enjoy watching it again this time around. Oh, no. You know, it's just because, no, because it's like the spiders. You got like the, it's like a, a, everything that I would not want to have happen like is happening in this movie it's like you go to turn off a lampshade and the spider comes down and bites you in the fucking hand you know it's just like that stuff is like what i don't like is like having those fears realized in a motion picture you know Where you know, it's like yeah the, yeah it's like you don't want to go and turn off a light and get bit by a spider you just want to turn off the light you know but this movie's like this person died from that yeah yeah and um I, I think that's one of the things that makes it so effective is because the, the director used so many tricks from so many horror movies to make this tiny thing really seem threatening. And uh, it, it, it was very effective at that. Um, yes. I, I remember this movie being huge at the time. It was on the back of like 
Like this movie and Sleepwalkers, I don't think I've seen so many comic books that have a movie poster on the back yeah. of it. But it yeah, was like this point. movie and Sleepwalkers, like they really hit everywhere. the comic book advertising hard. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Ooh, granted, there wasn't the internet back then, you know. So it's like, but it's like you got to hit the hit the markets where you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the arachnophobia poster all over the place. Um, I had the comic book as well, the arachnophobia comic book at one point. Oh, so, they they did a novelization of it. it yeah, or adaptation, it's just like they, whatever they called it. Yeah, it's just they like saw the movie and they're like, just do a sequ sequential comic book. There's nothing different about it. It's like almost the same pacing and beat for beat as the movie. So if you saw the movie, there's there's not really a reason for the comic book. Well, you know, yeah, other than to frighten kids more. Well, you know, back in the day, that's that's what we did while we were waiting for things to come out on video <laughs> because it wasn't like instant like it is today where you right. can just do theater at home. And Well, it's pretty wild now that it's like we're so pampered because it's like, oh, the movie hit the theater six weeks later. It's on VOD, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas, like, I, I remember Forrest Gump was in the movie theater for an entire year at, in my local cinema. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how popular that these movies were then. Now it's like, oh, man, it spent two months in the theaters. That's such a long run. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. But, yeah, Forrest Gump was in the same theater next to my childhood house for a whole year. That's like I saw it twice and I was like, oh, it's got it. Nope, still here. <laughs> still making money. That's the interesting thing, also, is to realize like they didn't pull it out of the theater because it was still making money. You know, mm -hmm. that's what's crazy. So the so popular that's like, yeah, we're just gonna have this keep yeah, it's still bringing us money, it's still paying our rent. Yeah, you know, we'll just keep Scream going. was the same way. We mentioned that in that episode. Yeah. It just was the movie that could like it just kept going and going and going um yeah you know what i realized and it, this must have been such a 90s trope um and i i think it only hit me because we just watched bad moon where it's like hey crazy shit happens in third world country and now it's in america right yeah like <laughs> that yeah. Mo bad moon did that congo did that this movie oh did God. that and they were all like right around the same era. It's interesting you bring up Congo because it's the same director. That tracks. Arachnophobia. Frank Marshall. That tracks. Yeah. So it's probably just like saying, oh, yeah, we could just say it's uh, something else and we could have the same movie. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. We'll take the catalyst. We'll make it slightly different and we'll call it Congo. <laughs> well, well, this wasn't a Michael Crichton book. Yeah. But he was just rising to prominence at that time, because I feel like Jurassic Park was 93, and then Rising Sun, Kong, it was like anything Michael Crichton made, they just rubber-stamped wow. it for a minute there. Well, he did Andromeda Strain, right? Oh, Michael he Crichton. did? Yeah, that's really good. That was good. like a pretty big, for, pretty big miniseries, like, before Jurassic Park, Yeah, you know? scary scary stuff too but i mean we did practically just live through it with COVID. so yeah god doesn't it do, do you are you measuring things in like COVID time because i feel like the two years that well we're still in COVID. let's not let's not forget that we're still it's, dealing it's, with it yeah it's not over but yeah. people act like it's over yeah but uh um i feel like COVID, the onset of COVID till now is like six months is actually like three years you know so it's like do we measure things in covid time like now you know like oh yeah that was so long ago it's like yeah, it was actually like two months ago but it feels like it's a year you know well you know ever, ever since the bottom fell out in 2020 i i feel like we're just living through one episode of the outer limits after the other after the other because it's like there's no way this can get any worse ha just you wait <laughs> yeah and somehow it finds a way um i don't know if if you can't laugh about it then it would just be depressing so i i try to keep a upbeat attitude but uh, uh you know like anyone else it gets to me sometimes but 
you know, then something good usually happens, and it's like, well, oh, it's just we're living in strange times. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I'm just I, I'm more worried about like the the IQs, you know what what that means for. Yeah, I'm gonna say something because it sounds like I'm being really offensive, but there's a really serious thing that's happening from COVID, and that is, uh, if you were hospitalized for it, your IQ has significantly dropped. Mm. because of the lack of oxygen sa yeah, uh, of the brain saturation fog. yeah um so it's like people on average are losing if they were vented uh in the hospital they lost an average of 10 or more iq points that's a big drop that's a big drop so, yeah. you know and it's like it, well how, how big is that going to affect people you know on, well, I, on a, a large scale scaled up to a huge population yeah. what does that mean you know well I, it's not I, good I, <laughs> no, it, it isn't, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but the average person has an IQ of less than 120, which right. in and of itself is pretty low. I, I think it yes. only goes up to like 134 or something like that. No, no, no. Uh, the, the IQ, depending on what test, it's like 160 to 180 is like the top. Like the like, if you're 160, you are Einstein, Stephen Hawking, like you're that level of person yeah, that's like, right and i don't i don't even know if we've had someone intel so intelligent that they've broken past like the 170 barrier you mm -hmm. know like that is so rare that is like once in uh, a civilization you know mm -hmm. uh but um like uh yeah that that's right because like one i want to say like 138 to 141 is where the cutoff for genius starts yeah it's, it's coming back and then to it's me like, now yeah and so when you're looking at that where it's like average people are going into like the 110s low 100s it's like a pretty serious like cognitive deficit mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like and i hate to sound like that we're supposed to be talking about arachnophobia but we got sidetracked but it's just a, it's an interesting thing because i i feel like it's going to represent a generational problem in passing down uh intelligence and knowledge to a new generation believe it or not yeah. so anyways there you go uh, i hope you guys feel better about whatever's going on in your life <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no matter how bad a day you're having you're not one of those people yeah um, yeah god god willing but uh hey you know we're, we're all in the and same if you boat are together, there's nothing so we can do for you <laughs> we're, we're we're all in the same boat together so let's let's work together people just lay, yeah. lay lay your swords down and work together for god's sakes yes yeah um did you have a favorite character in this i like john goodman because it was the only relief from all the serious spider attacks you know dude i he was like i got the stuff that could kill him i'm like yeah john goodman you get him <laughs> get him with that acid i throw that acid on him john goodman <laughs> i love his swagger and like he's like, he is that guy who's just really enjoying it. Like, he doesn't have a fun job, but he's just really enjoying the crap out of his job. And it's like, yes. I kind of feel like that's John Goodman in general, though, because, like, at anything I see him in, you can always tell that he's, like, really grateful to be there and just having fun. He's acting the crap out of it. And he's good. Like, if if I had to, like, cast any other person in that role, the only other person that springs to mind is Tom Atkins. For all the same reasons. Yeah, same energy, you mm -hmm. know, the same type of uh, I, I don't know what you'd call it, like cut from the same cloth, I guess. No, you that, know? that's a good term for it. Same energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, I was I was uh, he, thinking he, about the Jack difference Goodman. is he'd just be drinking Budweiser constantly, <laughs> right? <laughs> acid right. And gun in one hand and a Budweiser in the other. <laughs> right. Right. No, I was trying to think about cigarettes. that with this movie. Was I, I know like uh, John Goodman was in Roseanne at this point because I think Roseanne started in like '89. Oh, so it would have been right around there, yeah. Yeah, but I'm curious if this was like the movie that was like, oh, he can also be a movie star, because then you had like he he had like a a slew of movies after this where he was like the main character, where it was like um, matinee. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Yep. And then there was like uh King Ralph. King Ralph. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh and there was a couple others in there that were like early nineties movies, you know, uh -huh. but like after arachnophobia. So 
it seemed like he kind of broke the mold. There seemed to be a time when there was TV actors and movie actors and they were separated, you know? Uh, but now, like, it seems like that's they go back and forth, it's, you know, between both mediums now. Yeah, you know? it's it's kind of reversed because TV used to pay better than film, but it wasn't as respected. And it, it wasn't just John Goodman. You saw that a lot because Tom Hanks kind of came from the same background with like Bosom Buddies. Yeah. And then, you know, he his movie career talk, took off and he just never looked back. Um you saw that with a lot of people from Saturday Night Live, like Mike Myers and Rob Schneider, where, man, you know, Rob Schneider is one of those people where it's just like, I forget about him, but it, it's then when you start walking back through it, it's like, man, that guy's had a lot of cracks at bat. Like, you know. Um, anyway, but yeah, no, you're right. It is reversed now, and, and the emphasis is more on, like, streaming and, like, residuals there, and, like, Movies are still like more of a prestige thing, but streaming is really what where people want to live at because it's just kind of like infinite money potentially. Yeah, that's so wild to me. I still can't like we we take it for granted now because like streaming, so like just that's the new norm. Mm -hmm. But man, it was it's really interesting to see that take over. As I never would have imagined that a streaming service the idea of a streaming service would become as powerful as like Hollywood or um, cable, you know, where it was just like, I mean, Netflix is producing shows that's winning Emmys, you know, like that's. Yeah. Well, and they... that seemed uh, uh, impossible, you know, that, mm -hmm. like uh, that something new could come out and then like, there wasn't like the cats out of the bag. There was no turning back you know yeah i know it was kind of the new gold rush and uh you know kind, kind of what you're saying there i i just don't think anyone was really prepared for it and they didn't take it seriously so when it did take everyone sideways it totally changed the business model and yes. now everyone's rushing to catch up whereas the, you know the same kind of thing happened to music and like they really should have been prepared like looked at you know like the whole napster internet revolution and realize that you know the writing's on the wall it's only going to be a matter of time before that happens the motion picture right. industry they didn't and here we are yeah um like I, yeah you would think like after what happened with like uh napster and then subsequently online streaming music and itunes and stuff like that but like the movie industry would have been like hey we can this happened to a different industry yeah that's kind of similar to what we're doing hey wait a minute yeah <laughs> yeah uh-huh i don't know it's just i don't know it's like this has been sitting on their laurels because it's worked the same way for so many times like why change anything you know so i i, th I think well said i i think it's um exactly what happened but uh Anyways, hey. arachnophobia. It's one of those episodes, man. It's we're really trying hard to like talk about arachnophobia, but we are just on tangents. It's okay though. I'm for it. I'm yeah. here for it. Yeah. But well, we have we should call this like while, arachnophobia so. and dot, dot, dot. Tan tangent phobia. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, this yeah. was kind just... of during a period too where like Jeff Daniels was, I, I like he was kind of trying to be a serious actor. And I, I think at a certain point, he just, he just got bored with it and was like, yeah, I'll just go back to comedy because that's what I know. Yeah. He's, well, I don't know. I feel like he goes back and forth. Yeah. You know, because then there was like Speed in like 96 or 97. When did Speed come out? You know, and that oh was my like, God, yeah, he only had like one or two funny lines where it was like, I'm going to go home and have sex with my wife. <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. he was like drunk, you know, <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, I don't know. Like, what other... Uh, there was Dumb and Dumber, but what other... What other Escanaba in the Moonlight? That one was the comedy, right? You know, I, <laughs> I just saw that for the first time, and I, I don't know if you have to live in Michigan or have been to the UP to find it funny, but oh my god, it, like, 90 minutes, like, my, my ribs hurt from laughing so much. For real? Yeah, for real. Yeah. Okay. Here's my... I saw that movie in the theater 
Escanaba in the Moonlight. Oh, okay. Yeah, they because the the theater up north mm-hmm. by Traverse City was playing it. Obviously, you know, oh. like oh my god, you know, <laughs> so. jury duty for them, <laughs> right? So yeah, my dad and I went to see it. I think I was too young to to pick up on the humor. So mm-hmm. I, I think I should watch it again. But I don't know where you'd be able to find it at this point. You know, you know? I I th- well, there there's a free version with ads. I think on Amazon Prime because they own IMDb TV. It's okay. it's probably like two dollars. It's it's worth it, I'd say. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The the I just uh, let's go over like the things I don't like, and I think the reason why I don't why I have a phobia. The, it, the what we said earlier, this movie plays on like fears of. You know, creepy the crawlers. Yeah. Yeah. And it it really is like it's almost like a slasher movie you know it's Mm -hmm. got those same beats to it where it's like misdirection and then or like putting putting the spiders into scenarios that you would least want them in Mm -hmm. you know like the spider and the popcorn um oh god yeah you know it's like you just want to have some fucking popcorn and it's just like oh you get a mouthful of spider you know Mm -hmm. um go to turn off your light like i said before spider bites you you know, like you're putting your shoes on and you get bit by a spider. Like, it's just like every thing is like, yeah, I would. I f- already fear that there would be something in my shoe before right. I put it on. Why do you have to show me that? And I think that's that's the problem. It's like we all have this thing in our head where it's like worst case scenario, something like that would happen. But it would be such a freak occurrence. Right. Mm-hmm. Where it's like you put your shoe on and you're like, what's in my shoe? And the spider crawls out, you know. But it's like to see that, <laughs> to actually see that manifested in a visual media is really yeah. off-putting to me. <laughs> you know? Like, I, I know that it that's a irrational fear that I already had. But I don't like that a movie is exploiting that fear to a, a very surgical degree. And that's what arachnophobia has done. Like, it's like, we know you don't like these things, but we're going to we're going to show you those scenarios, mm-hmm. you know, just to drive it home. I, I feel like uh, Snakes on a Plane could have learned a lot of lessons from this because a lot of what this did really effectively, they did not do effective. You know, yeah. just instead yeah. of like the popcorn thing, it's like, oh, that snake going to be in the toilet. Ah! <laughs> like, yeah, right. Right. OK. Yeah. You know, ridiculous. Um yeah, no, I, I thought it was really suspenseful. Um, it also had kind of a... How would you describe the music in this? I don't even remember the music. Kind of like adventurous. I don't know. Mm-hmm. At some points, you know. But I don't... I think that's a good thing, though. I've talked about this before. It's like if I notice the music, it's because I'm bored with something else. Oh, well. That's Is that's that... unfortunate. It's it's okay, you know. It's it gets kind of like continuity errors because a, as an editor myself, you know, shit just happens sometimes, and the attitude is usually, well, if people notice this, is because they're not engaged by the movie. So right, that's that's fine. You know, I I I can understand that. There's it's not a wrong opinion to have or anything. It's totally valid, and I, and I'm glad you can still do that. Um, I, I I thought it was kind of like yeah, yeah. Would you say adventurous? Yeah. Um, it has that kind of Spielberg quality, but this was, it's not Amblin, but it it was Touchstone. Like, no, it was it, Amblin. It's like the Sphinx. This this or was Hollywood Amblin. Pictures. That's who it is. Yeah. Which yeah, they 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 were a distributor for it, so it, it was okay. probably like a co production. Because because right. Disney at the time was trying to do kind of um kind of like an adult label, you know, so they could they could make their Disney movies, but hey, here's a Hollywood picture and you know, yeah. it kind of fell under a different umbrella so they could make movies for like a more mature audience. More Your mature I, I guess being PG thirteen, <laughs> but um 
Yeah, this was cool. I just, I, I happened, I, the reason I suggested it is I haven't seen this movie in forever because for whatever that, whatever reason, even though it was huge at the time, it, it kind of feels like it flies under the radar now where it's, you know, you, you talk to people about it and they're like, oh, I remember arachnophobia. That was good. But it's not one of the first things on the tip of someone's tongue where you're like, best suspense movies from the 90s, go. It's just, That's true. You know. Um, I happen to see it I think it it's on... probably because of the spiders. <laughs> <laughs> People just block it out because we're all so traumatized by it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's and... like you look at Tremors, right? It, mm -hmm. it, it, at the end of the day, this is a creature feature movie, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like you also have Tremors that kind of hits like the same like seriousness, but kind of funny in certain parts. More of a thriller, not really a horror, you know... Mm -hmm. um, it's the same type of vibe that Tremors has with this one, but people remember Tremors so easily. But yeah, people, yeah, there's a vagueness with arachnophobia. Mm -hmm. You always remember the, the, the poster though, of the little fucking spider coming into the frame of the moon. Yeah, <laughs> it really good use of color too, with like the purple and the yellow, and then like yeah, the silhouette against it. Yeah, no, I I, 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 I would never hang it up in my house because like you No, sad. I would think that the spider's real, and I would be <laughs> constantly like swatting the poster with a magazine or something, you know. Uh, but um, I I would like to see a high definition version of that just to see if it's airbrushed or not. You know what? I never realized speaking about movie posters until I bought the poster and just stared at it for hours because it's gorgeous. The, the movie poster for RoboCop is not a photo. It's a painting. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. And there there's a, like, it's so good, but you can almost, like, when you really look at it, you can almost see where the artist ran out of time because the inside of the door, totally lazy. Um, his, his leg is actually coming out of the car seat, so even the way that he's standing is impossible. None of the reflections are accurate. But he looks so good, you can't take your eye off of it. It's true. Um, I I got I got one for you since we're on the subject of interesting posters. Hit me. And I and I no one's ever talked about it, so I don't think people realized it. But I always thought it was fascinating because of the subject matter. Matter. It's the original Matrix poster. Okay, okay. the one with uh, Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus, and they're all like Neo's in front, mm -hmm. and then Morpheus on the side of them, mm -hmm. and then in the background, it's like the 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 letters. And then they're kind of standing on the rubble from the lobby sequence, right? You remember that poster? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the the, the one that's commonly seen, you know? Well, it was the DVD cover, too, for a while. Yeah, but Until the interesting they thing... Fucked it up with the re-releases, but go ahead. Yeah, but the interesting thing is about halfway down, starting just above the knee on all the characters, it turns from a photo into a drawing. So the bottom, the whole bottom third of that poster is a drawing, and the top half is a photo. And I'm like, why would they do that? Mm -hmm. And I think it was intentional. And because there's the reality, and then there's, you know, the fake Matrix world. Meaning, like, the, the both of them are coexisting at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone's put two and two together with that. No one's brought that up, that it's a drawing on the bottom. Like, his boots are not his boots. It's a it's an illustration. Yeah. So. I that's that's quite possible um the only other reasoning or rationality for that i can think of is i i want to say at the time they did character posters because that was a thing yeah and the photographer might have just chopped them off at the knees and then someone was like They're like just draw it <laughs> yeah someone was like no no no, we got to have all of them together in the i like my reason better brian <laughs> no it's it's probably true yeah um you know, artistically, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I, I hope that's the real explanation because that's that's actually good marketing. I think so. But, you know, with the, how the how it all turned out at the end, probably it was probably an accident and they chopped off their legs and were like, we got to do something about this. You know, what, so. what are we going to do about this? <laughs> You're fired. You're not doing another poster. You'll never yeah. work in this town again. Yeah. That's... You know, come to think of it, the Sleepwalkers poster and this poster use the same colors. 
highly the, purple, the yellow, dark blues, purples, pinks, you know, and then that that like cream color. Mm -hmm. It's a good combination. It's actually a really good combination for uh, artwork. So, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write that down. And 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 if I use that, I didn't get the idea from you, trademark. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, you so yeah know, going back what's that well well because we were just talking about like the the ways that this movie affected us and i i didn't get the fear of spiders just only because people are naturally afraid of spiders i didn't know that an air nailer existed because i was used to like you know hitting hammers and nails the old-fashioned way with a hammer and when when there was when I saw that there was a gun that shot nails, I was I, I just like look at my dad like they have those. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. Thing. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm are over here like a you? schmuck, like, you know, <laughs> pounding, bending them, like hitting them wrong. I don't. You know, it sounds so crazy. Like, if we go back, like we were fortunate enough to see like advancements of technology through our lives. We're like, wow, that like we can remember a time before and after, because I feel like my dad felt the same way. Like, what? You can just get a gun that shoots a nail out. Yeah. You know, it's genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, well, where, where the hell do I get one of those? Yeah. You know, because my dad was like, he was a dentist, but he built things he was a builder that was his hobby like he built my deck or the deck on the back of the family home you've seen it that's oh, pretty that's big. impressive yeah that he built that you know he's into carpentry and cabinetry and all that stuff so I, for him it's like a, a power tool like that would be like super beneficial i'm sure it was the same with your dad where it's like wait those are real <laughs> you just go buy one <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> What well, have I been doing with my life? You know, like I, I play around with cameras and lights. Like those are my power tools. But, you know, my dad, very similar to yours, is, you know, very hands-on craftsman. You'd swear there was some Amish in him because he builds furniture and cabinets. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's impressive stuff. But, you know, that that's what he's passionate about. And um, <laughs> he, he actually asked me the one day, like, so... When I go, what what are the tools you'll actually want? I'm just like, Dad, you're wow. the only you're the only person who knows what half of this shit is. Like, just keep it simple. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Hold on, this is no disrespect for your dad. Mm -hmm. I love your dad, right? Yeah. But I thought you were gonna say you're the only tool that I want, Dad. <laughs> like, where it was like. <laughs> But that's so mean. It just popped into my head. And that's not it's not towards your dad at all. Yeah. Because your dad's not a tool. He, like your dad's awesome. Yeah. You know, he, like he, he's he'd a he'd really appreciate good guy. That, though. Yeah, he's he's a good sport. <laughs> he'd appreciate that. Yeah. There I, I got him with like some surgical cut down the one day because like he he is kind of famous for like, you know why I told you to do that? you know, like <laughs> after the fact, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I forget what he and my brother were doing, but he's like, now, you know why I said that? And without missing a beat, I'm just like, so you could rub it in. <laughs> and he just like, he didn't have anything. He just looked at me and mouthed the words, Brian. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's always funny to get like your parents with one, you mm -hmm. know, where it's like, and you also kind of appreciate it if they're still sharp enough to pick up what you're putting down. Yeah. You know? like, Cause uh, I was telling them um, it's actually appropriate since we're coming up on Thanksgiving soon, but there was one Thanksgiving where my mom, my mom is the cook, right? She loves to have everyone over. She loves to cook all the dinners, you know, mm -hmm. make all the desserts, all the pies, like she would make a pumpkin pie and an apple pie. It's a whole day for her and she loved doing it, but there would come a time every Thanksgiving where her patience was gone <laughs> like mm -hmm. and she was getting a little feisty around us and around guests or whatever and this this one particular thanksgiving it was trying there were a lot of people there i think we had like 20 ish people wow. at the home I think it was a lot like yeah. a couple turkeys you know <laughs> so oh, and you've got a tiny kitchen so yeah I mean, it's she not must a have been... managed yeah 
you know, run, yeah. running a six ring circus there like Barnum and <laughs> Bailey. Like, that's <laughs> right, impressive. Right. Right. And so she uh, she got a little feisty and then she goes, God, I just I, I'm going to start drinking wine. I was like, that's a good idea to take the edge off all of us, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then she's like, that's very funny. I would laugh if I wasn't annoyed. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Because that easily could have been one of those if looks could kill moments, too. <laughs> right, right. Have some alcohol to take the edge off of us, not yourself. <laughs> Please. Please. Because you're you're running we're like, we're all happy to be here, but you're the cook, but you're 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 stressing yourself out. And yes. by proxy, you're stressing us out. <laughs> yeah. So. Have have some help from Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we never had a big Thanksgiving after that. Uh, they've been much more toned out. <laughs> I oh, okay. think she learned learned the lesson. You know. You know, on the subject of Thanksgiving, um, I I just want to put this out there because I I just saw that it was happening. Um, if anybody needs a place to go on Thanksgiving. And they have a Leo's Coney Island around them. It has to be Leo's Coney Island because nationals aren't doing it. They're doing a free Thanksgiving dinner from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So oh, wow. Just just putting that out there. You need somewhere that, to go on Thanksgiving. You want a nice meal. Just go to your Coney Island. That's a pretty nice gesture. Yeah. You know, and I feel like um, with things the way that have gone for a lot of people, that's actually like would be pretty helpful, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. It's it's there's a lot of pressure, exterior pressure onto unjustly onto a lot of people that don't deserve it. So, mm -hmm. so yep. that's a good thing. We need more Leo's Coney Islands out in the world. You know, do a little philanthropy. Yeah. So be nice, wouldn't it? It, it would be. It, w it would be a little bit. Just a uh, scotch, tiny bit more better than what we're doing with humanity right now. You know. Well, Just, you uh, know. Maybe we'll get back to that point, but maybe that's wishful thinking. Who knows? Hey, uh, speaking of wishful thinking, so in your opinion, mm -hmm. what would have been a scarier movie to film? Because, it, you know, and I was thinking about this because, like, this wasn't CG. Like, they really had the actors next to spiders. Like, they're in the same shot crawling on them in their hair running around what in your opinion would have been creepier for you to be in arachnophobia or the cockroach segment from creep show man i th well let's break it down okay okay so i think both of them would be super problematic because of the breeding of the spiders and the cockroaches right mm -hmm. so you would just because that was the problem with the cockroaches in Creep Show, right? It's they like, never found them all. <laughs> they never found them all, and they just said that they did. So there's probably this population of cockroaches in that area from this movie to this day, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that spiders have a relatively quick life cycle as well, right? And that therein lies the rub, again, of overbreeding these spiders how do you i mean there was parts in this movie where they had hundreds of spiders on camera you know where it's oh, like yeah. and it's like well how do you make sure you have them all right you, you know you know what they you were know? doing i i saw some behind the scenes photos because it's like you know how how do you direct spiders like they just have a mind of their own and they were actually using like hair dryers and things like that Oh, so, to push so they, them yeah they oh, kind of yeah, shoot like them the... off camera and they just would like skitter away from it because they don't like they're cold blooded. That's pretty so, smart. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So, but like one, I think the reason that I don't like insects, spiders, that sort of thing, is also that I think that they'll bite me. I think that they're all trying to bite me. It's a safe right? bet most of the time. Right. But I just stay away because I don't like getting bit. Right. But do cockroaches bite? Like, are they biters? I mean, according to Peter Venkman, they'll bite your head off, man. Well, I mean, there's the Mimic cockroaches. Those were just m mutated cockroaches from the movie Mimic, you know, and, like, they they could bite your head off. I think they did to mm -hmm. a couple of the people in that movie. Uh, so, 
Yeah, the biting thing. If cockroaches don't bite, bite, I would probably have to go with cockroaches. Or if Beetlejuice is to be believed, they just want his egg nut. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I feel hey, like hey, I don't. Come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think you could convince me that there's a spider that big that isn't trying to harm me. I don't think that's a possibility. So I would I would say by default I would go with cockroaches. You know, not I've, by choice though. Did, did you ever know anyone growing up that had a tarantula? Our, our anatomy and physiology teacher had one in the classroom. Okay. I dated a girl one time and she had a python and a tarantula and she used to like to let them just free range and fuck i I, I fell asleep over there one time and i woke up with a fucking tarantula on my chest and like it took every ounce of like james bond level concentration to not just <sighs> <laughs> karate chop it right off my chest because they're scary like even though they're sitting there not doing anything it's like i got too much hair man i don't trust you yeah, Any, anything anything like, with that many eyes aren't trustworthy like well yeah and then it's like oh we also have teeth as fangs as big as our head mm -hmm. you know like i i don't know it just seems like that's super intimidating and i'm fine with it intimidating me i just don't want it to get near me like that seems like it's like its whole it seems like a spider's essence its whole reason for living is to be intimidating right mm -hmm. i just don't care for a whole species that revolves around that type of outward appearance i uh i don't disagree and just to put a final pin in that story the tarantula's name was princess and <laughs> She saw the whole thing. It's like, don't hurt Princess. Like, Princess almost swallowed my shithole. Like, I'm going home. Right. That's cool. We can wrap this up. We're, we're about okay. an hour, so. An hour of not talking about arachnophobia. Oh, I think uh, there's some 50%. pearls of wisdom in there. Okay, about 50%. Yeah. I do think... We, we okay, did better now... than Night Shift. I'll, I'll give us that one. <laughs> right. I will say that it is a good movie. I can say that definitively. Like, yeah. it is, from front to back, it's a really good movie. It's structured really well. It's intense. It's also very funny in certain parts. Mm -hmm. It just has spiders in it. And that's a hard hurdle for me to jump over. <laughs> you know? That's, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Um, I'm, I'm glad I bought it. It's been a long time. You know, they say there's only three kinds of stories man versus man man versus nature and man versus self and you know this is one of them <laughs> um i think it's uh it's interesting that a you know a movie like this can be so off-putting because of whatever primal fear and yet at the same time you have all of these factors in play but i could watch jaws endlessly yeah Ex explain that one to me i don't know you know i've wondered that too and i think um it's kind of the same thing why like with jaws where we have a disconnect is also the same reason why if you reveal too much about a slasher character like mm -hmm. michael myers for example mm -hmm. if you re reveal too much about their backstory same with actually freddy krueger it becomes less scary and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more. So, like, Michael Myers wasn't scary after Halloween 2 because he's only attacking his family members, right? right. That's what I liked about the new ones, right? Because now he's just attacking anybody that's just in his way, mm -hmm. you know, which is kind of what it should have been. And then same thing with, like, Freddy Krueger. He's only really going after the offspring of the people that put him, that set him on fire, right? Right. Like the Elm Street kids. Mm-hmm. But also, like, the reason why we have a disconnect to Jaws is we're nowhere near saltwater. <laughs> like, it's just not around us. Like, we don't, it's yeah. not like Jaws is going to come at us out of Great Lake Michigan, it, you know? And 
any time I've ever been water skiing waiting for that boat to circle back around, it doesn't stop me from hearing the theme song. Da-da. Shut up, brain. Oh, you get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I guess. Yeah. There are some weird fish, though, that kind of want to rub up against you in fresh water. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so... Well, yeah, I mean, that's another primal thing, and that, that's one of the reasons why I actually enjoyed you know whenever we went up north to traverse city because the water is so beautiful it's like the tropics where like you can mm-hmm. look down and actually see your feet whereas you know by proxy the detroit river lake st Clair, are they for all intents and purposes it might as well be sewer water because you, <laughs> you can't see yeah. more than like six inches down like there is you just yeah. it's mucky you just you don't know it's down there and uh, there's just something about the fear of the unknown that it, it'll get you every time man yeah it is interesting well like those lakes up there the the difference is it's not there's not water coming into any of those lakes that we went to up there mm-hmm. it's all spring fed so that, like all the water is coming from beneath all the sand so it's like it's coming into the that body of water already filtered that's why there's the difference there's not hey with this river with all this nasty sediment it came into this lake and you know, made it all cloudy, Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, you can see about like 15, 20 feet down. It's pretty incredible. Like that's how clear the water is. It's nuts. You've won this round trip back. Yeah. But still, you can still think of Jaws when the water's all blue. Moral of the story. Still think you're going to get bitten up. But that's my theory is Mm -hmm. that like we have a disconnect with Jaws because it's like we're not we're geographically so far away from where that could have happened that, but spiders are everywhere. Um, they're, yeah, they're everywhere I've ever been. They're probably in space as well. You know, yeah. like space spiders. I don't know. It's like, this is a spider that doesn't even need oxygen to survive. It's just hanging out in the cosmos, flying around. Yeah. They so, don't either. They can live some crazy amount of time. Like I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're done we did it <laughs> yeah and then they would do interesting things with it too where like it would drop out almost like you're hearing it from the other car and then when the car hits her like now it's back full and we're yeah um, I, nobody kind of did stuff like that too i don't have a specific example off the top of my head but i just just rewatched that recently which got me kind of thinking about this where it's like yeah you know i'd kind of like to see this one again Thank you.